circuit analysis based on the Thevenin equivalent circuit. We will look at examples including resistors, capacitors, constant voltage, and constant current sources. The basic idea is to have a circuit problem and to distinguish between an output and the rest of the network. And it's the network that is replaced by the Thevenin equivalent circuit, which consists of a constant voltage source in series with an impedance. Both the Thevenin volts, and in this case the Thevenin ohms, are calculated based on the output being left open. Let's start with a resistor example that we would otherwise have solved with, in physics for example, the idea of series and parallel combinations. But the question is to calculate the current and wire segment AB. Before we do the Thevenin method, let's just verify that from the solution table, we can see that 1.2 amps that passes through the 12.5 ohms would come up and out of the positive of the 48 volt constant voltage source into junction A. And the current in the 220 ohms, the 0.15 amps, would go down out of junction A. So at junction A then, the wire segment AB must have a current that is the difference of those values, 1.05 amps. Now, to solve this as a Thevenin circuit problem, we need to distinguish between an output and the rest of the network. So the question dictates the output, right? Calculate the current in wire segment AB. That means that the wire segment AB is the output. And I've done a little redrawing of the network here, but I've left the output missing, right? So it's an open output. You can verify that the rest of the connections are the same as the original circuit. And so now with this open circuit output uh, redrawing of the network, we calculate the Thevenin volts and the Thevenin ohms. Now for the Thevenin volts, we can see that with an open output, there's only one pathway, one series loop for current to flow. So as a series loop, we can get the volts on the 220 ohm resistance using the voltage divider formula. So the 220 over the sum of the two resistors in series times the 48 volts is 45.42 volts. Now for the Thevenin ohms, we short circuit the constant voltage source and we think what would be the equivalent resistance observed at points A, B. Well, we have two parallel combinations that are then in series, right? So by combining the parallel combinations and adding those results, we get the 43.26 ohms. That's our Thevenin ohms. So we bring in the Thevenin equivalent circuit, but now we connect the output and we can simply use Ohm's law, V equals IR, and get the current in segment AB as the Thevenin volts over the Thevenin ohms, indeed 1.05 amps. And that's what we had uh, previously from analyzing the solution table. Next. So here's a capacitor example. And again, the, the idea is that the question determines the output. Calculate the charge on the 75. Let's assume all capacitances in microfarads. That makes the 75 microfarads the output. So we do a, a redrawing of the network where we will connect the 75 microfarads at these output points, but later. Right? So leaving the output open you can verify that the rest of the connections are correct. And so now the Thevenin volts. Leaving the output open, we see that we have one charge loop and it's a series loop. We have three capacitors in series, 90, 100, and 150 microfarads. So we take the inverse of sum of inverses and get 36 microfarads. In series, charge is the same. We can get the charge CV, 36 microfarads times 9 volts, 324 microcoulombs as the charge associated with any of the items in series. So for example, the volts on the 90 microfarads would be that charge 324 divided by the 90 microfarads 
and that gives us 3.6 volts. Now the Thevenin volts, looking at the output points, uh, starting at the bottom, coming up through the 9 minus the plus 9 volts would be 9, and then through the 90 microfarad capacitor, plus to minus, minus that 3.6 volts, we get our Thevenin voltage, 5.4 volts. Now for Thevenin capacitance, we short circuit the constant voltage source, and we consider the equivalent capacitance at the output points. And we see that the 90 is in parallel with the combination of the 100 in series with the 150. So the series combination of the 100 and the 150 is the inverse of sum of inverses gives us 60, and then added to the 90 in parallel, 90 plus 60 is the 150 microfarad Thevenin capacitance. Now we bring in the Thevenin equivalent circuit and this time connect the output, the 75 microfarads, and we have a simple series loop where we can get the equivalent capacitance, uh, 75 and 150, take the inverse of sum of inverses, we get 50 microfarads, and then the charge CV, right? The 50 microfarads times the 5.4 volts, 270 microcoulombs. And so that's the answer for the original circuit. 270 microcoulombs on the 75 microfarad capacitor. Another resistor example. And we want to calculate the current in the 40 ohm. So again, the question determines the output. So I've done a redrawing of the network on the right with those two open pins on the right uh, where the 40 ohms will connect later, right? It's an open output you can verify that all the other interconnections are, are the same, they're correct. So first we find the Thevenin volts. Now notice the 24 volts is directly connected to the 50 ohms. It's also directly connected to the series combination of 60 and 30. In other words, the 50 ohms has no effect on the output, but the 24 volts across the 60 and 30 or 90 uh, that's a series circuit that is a voltage divider, right? So the Thevenin volts is the volts across the 60, which is 60 over the sum of the two items in series, the 60 and 30, times the 24 volts, 16 volts for the Thevenin volts. Now, for the Thevenin ohms, we short circuit the constant voltage source that shorts out the 50 ohms, and that leaves us with effectively the 30 ohms in parallel with the 60. It doesn't look parallel, but you can see the 60 and 30 are connected at two junctions. So 60 in parallel with 30 is 20 ohms. That's our Thevenin ohms. Bringing in the Thevenin circuit and applying the output for the ohms connected to points A and B. The current in the 40 ohms then is the 16 volts divided by that series combination of resistors, the 20 ohms and 40 ohms, which is 60 ohms. So we get 0 0.267 amps as the answer. Another example of resistors, instead of a constant voltage source, we have a 4.2 amp constant current source. And again, on the right, I've shown a redrawing of the network missing the output, the 40 ohms, and you can convince yourself that the other connections are equivalent. And so now we'll get the Thevenin volts. Uh, we'll see that the current, the 4.2 amps, divides among the 50 and what's effectively 90, the 60 and 30 in series. So we can use our current divider and say that the current in the 90 ohms, which is also because 60 in, is in series with 30, that's also the current through the 60 ohms. And that's the other one, the 50 over the sum 50 and 90, that fraction of the 4.2 amps. So the Thevenin volts is the voltage drop across the 60 ohms from Ohm's law, 90 volts. Now for the Thevenin resistance, with a constant current source, we open circuit that current source. So looking at points A, B, and thinking about the equivalent resistance, 
we see that the 30 is in series with the 50, and that makes 80, and the 80 is in parallel with the 60. So that gives us 34.29 ohms. So we bring in that Thevenin circuit with the output, the 40 ohms included, and we get the current in the 40 ohms, similar to before but with different values, is the, the 90 volts over that series resistance, the 34.29 plus the 40. We get 1.21 amps. And that's the Thevenin equivalent circuit method. It's most useful when there is a specific question you're trying to answer, which then determines an output as opposed to the rest of the network.